Hey guys, a very warm welcome to all of you on our channel that is Edu Mandla. So today we will be discussing about the difference between political theory and political ideology. So this lecture is part of our series uh, that we have started on the subject of political science and international relations. And uh, before starting the video, let me inform you that this video is specifically for those students who have political science and international relations as an optional subject uh, in uh, CSE mains and also those students who have a general interest in theoretical aspects of political science they can also listen to this lecture so uh, we will be delving into the theoretical details so uh, it will be interesting but it will be interesting only if you have interest in political theory so without wasting much time let's start our discussion so first of all we will look uh, or look uh, at the concept of ideology yesterday also uh, we made a video i i have made special video for the concept of ideology in which i explained in detail uh, what does it mean uh, what does uh, what does this this term signify and uh, it is it is basically studied from two aspects as a set of ideas and as a, as a science of ideas so you can uh, see yesterday's lecture if you want to know about these two aspects in detail so first of all we will think uh, we will look at political ideology so see the thing is that uh, ideology is basically a set of ideas uh, as i have told you two aspects are there ideology as a set of ideas ideology as a science so here we are taking it uh, in this sense of set of ideas and uh, as we know that ideology is a set of ideas or system of thought which is generally uh, kind of considered infallible by its adherents and then in that context political ideology means the set of ideas uh, which are considered by a particular group of people to be to be true to be valid to be infa uh, infallible when it comes to determining the best form of government so in political science what to, what do you basically study the subject matter of the political science is is uh, is to consider different ideologies to to uh, to look uh, at the uh, to look at the issues like uh, what is government uh, which form of government should be there and uh, who should exercise power who should exercise authority and what is the legitimacy of uh, uh, that authority or power which is being exercised by the government so this is basically the subject matter of the political science so when we give answer to these questions that is uh, which form of government is the best or uh, uh, who the ruler should be how how the people should be governed what is the relation between the uh, between the government and the citizen so the answer to these questions come in the form of multiple theories so those theories have become popular in the name of different political ideologies so i will be delving into the details of different politi political ideologies but i will just give here you a very uh, brief example of uh, for example liberalism or socialism or communism com communism so these are uh, different political uh, ideologies which uh, uh, advocate a particular a type of government a particular set of ideas and they consider it to be infallible so that is basically uh, the uh, the ideology in political sense it means so now uh, our main uh, subject matter of the this entire lecture is the difference between a political theory and a political ideology so often students get confused between these two terms but uh, here we will uh, uh, we will be noticing its uh, the difference between these two terms in a very minute detail so that you have clear cut uh, idea of what what these two terms signify, signify so if we see the politics then uh, you you may be aware of the fact that it is a contested sphere so there is a lot of debate that that goes on uh, when we think of politics and in that context political ideology arise out of the stresses and strains of certain political situations because for example uh, we are currently uh, if uh, we are a citizen of india so we 
um, uh, some people may think that democracy uh, in some group of people in India may think that uh, democracy is the best form of government. The other may think that uh, no, democracy is not that uh, the best form of government. Communism is the best form of government, or socialism is the best form of government, or for that matter, uh, that, that uh, some other type of government is the best government uh, and uh, which which can govern people. So in that context, political ideology arises out of the stresses and strains of certain political situations so it is it does not come out of the vacuum it comes out of the strains that exist uh, in the existing political system so if you are aware of the uh, uh, theory of capitalism and then uh, uh, in in that theory uh, there was a there was an issue of uh, exploitation of the uh, uh, have nots by the haves so uh, that is basically uh, the theory of Karl Marx uh, in which he highlighted how the capitalists exploit uh, the, the uh, have nots. So in that case, as the dominant form of government at that time uh, when Karl Marx was living and when he proposed his theory of socialism and communism, at, at that time uh, that liberal democracy uh, was dominant and uh, and and in and in fact, capitalism was uh, uh, kind of uh, guiding the very minute aspects of uh, human life. In that uh, in that thing, when the stresses and strains were noticed, then Karl Marx came with an alternative. So that type of alternative with which he came, uh, that uh, they were uh, basically a set of ideas. So those set of ideas. Uh, uh, are, are, are termed as uh, ideology. So, uh, in, uh, so Karl Marx uh, has proposed in this context the ideology of communism and socialism and all those things. So, however, one thing is very important that political ideology comes out of peculiar situation, but it may also have some vested interest to serve or may embody some distortions because for uh, if you uh, uh, if you notice the stresses and strains in a particular political system in which you are living then you develop a viewpoint in which you think that this is not the good way to go and we should find an alternative and you propose an alternative and then that alternative is informed basically by your understanding of the world, your observation of the world. But that may not be actually the truth. So there may be a certain element of truth in, in your, uh, in your uh, statements or your set of ideas. But uh, to say that they are infallible, that would be a wrong thing. So uh, in that context, political ideology is always uh, informed by some vested interest or it is basically uh, uh, it, it embodies some distortions so no political ideology is perfect we, we can call as universal uh, universal theory political theory or universal uh, truth so in that context the sphere of political theory is wider so when we think of political ideology uh, we think of set of a particular set of ideas which we think are important and we think are uh, are relevant in uh, in in bringing change in the human society for the betterment of uh, entire humanity but the sphere when we consider the political theory then its space uh, its sphere and its scope is much wider than the political ideology because it involves the critical evaluation of multiple political ideologies that are proposed by uh, different theorists or that that come into existence out of some peculiar political situations so political theory just not just focuses upon one one ideology it focuses upon all the ideologies it analyzes them and uh, it 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 basically uh, tries to understand what is the plus points of a particular ideology and what are the negative points so that is basically the role of the political theory so political theory uh, does the critical evaluation and its purpose is basically to single out the truth truth so you see we have noticed as we have uh, as i have told you that we say that political ideology is not the universal truth it is a distorted view of the things. 
so in that context what is political theory the political theory is basically the purpose of political theory is to single out the truth out of the different political ideologies that have been proposed and uh, uh, let's move on to the next slide so political ideology is also one important difference between political theory and political ideology is that political ideology is very closely related to the politics so in everyday politics um, uh, when when the people interact when the government interacts with the people or the people have uh, interaction with the government then stresses and strains uh, arise so when those stresses and strains and tensions arise then uh, a set of ideas are proposed and those ideas are, are it, uh, it is are uh, those ideas are argued to be the uh, better uh, better ideas better set of uh, things uh, in 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 which the government can function or in which the government can interact with the citizens so it is closely related to politics but also it uh, involves a passionate search of for better society according to the prescribed model now the question arises what what does it mean so when we for example we take the uh, concept of communism so when we talk about communism then uh, this uh, this theory comes out of uh, the theory of uh, a kind of conflict uh, between the haves and the have nots so that set of uh, set of uh, things that are there uh, from them the karl marx constituted the theory of the communism and he argued that this will be the best thing to do for the society uh, when it comes to political organization and and he basically argued that through communism will we find the perfect form of society in which there will be perfect justice so it is basically uh, if you uh, it is it is basically like you have a tool and you 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 say that this tool is is the only way to 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 build a better society so that is basically political ideology but political theory is a disinterested search for a better society so because as i've told you that political theories scope is very wide so it considers different political theory uh, ideologies and it does an decent disinterested search and its base, its goals are basically constant investigation and critical evaluation of various ideologies that come into existence uh, out of the political tensions or out of the political situations that prevail at that time so when we talk about uh, the political ideology then there are a group of people who are passionate about it and they are passionate that they will bring that type of uh, thing into existence to build a better society but when it comes to the political theorist political theorist uh, uh, has no fascination for a particular political arrangement so he does a disinterested search Uh, for a better society and he analyzes all those ideologies that are being proposed at that time and then he highlights uh, what is the truth in uh, and truth in those ideologies and uh, what could be the better way or uh, what what are the disadvantages uh, of 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 different ideologies that have been uh, that are being proposed so on the contrary ideology is designed designed either to defend or to condemn a particular system so it is a kind of thing that ideology says that when you when you are motivated by a political ideology you you either define the present form of government or or either you are against it for example you are a very strong advocate of democracy then certainly and uh, you will say that democracy liberal democracy is the best way to govern people and uh, there is no alternative but a communist will come and he will say no this you are not right uh, this system has these loopholes and communism is the kind of a uh, a remedy for all these uh, contradictions that arise in a liberal democracy so it basically uh, is a kind of uh, uh, 
against and uh, or and against and in favor of the status quo so either you are in favor of status quo or you are against the status quo so now let's move on to uh, more points so if we think of a political theory that is loaded by an ideology then we can't consider that political theory to be to be the universal truth because it is informed by an ideology it is bound to be distorted because when we uh, use when we apply the lens of an ideology we see the distorted image of the social and the political reality and we don't understand uh, it from uh, uh, from a kind of uh, dispassionate viewpoint and uh, politi- uh, but the the subject matter the 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 focus of the political theory or political science is on impartial observation of the things that are in play uh, so a political theorist will simply observe and uh, in and in impartial way uh, the existing system and uh, the prospective uh, system which is being proposed as an alternative to the uh, status quo so ideology is basically the thing that focuses upon selected parts of political and social reality like i have given you the example of communism so uh, when uh, when there 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 when there was a uh, there was liberal democracy prevalent in europe and uh, the capitalism was basically guiding the uh, form of the government and uh, at that time uh, it was figured out that there are some tensions there are uh, increasing tensions between the haves and the have nots so karl marx came with uh, with, uh, uh, with with that this theory of communism in which he so that uh, there is there can be no reconciliation between a capitalist and a, a proletariat so he he saw all the all the things all the aspects or all the set of ideas as a kind of a conflict between the have and have nots so he he said that these are uh, all these things that are in play that we experience that we feel that we see they are they are they are kind of guided by the morality or uh, set of ideas of uh, uh, capitalism uh, and liberalism and they are not pro labor or pro proletariat so in that context he said uh that uh, uh, the entire entire society is built on the concept of uh, uh, conflict so there is a constant conflict that can never be reconciled reconciled so this is kind of a distorted description and explanation of social reality or political reality one example that i want to give you here is of for example uh the if you have read the trusteeship theory of gandhi ji so according to that theory uh gandhi ji argued that uh, that the capitalist or the industrialist or those who have who have the resources they must act as the trustees of of their um, uh, their their labor or or the or, or their employees so gandhi ji says that uh, an industrialist must take care of his business uh, not only from the perspective of his profit but also from the perspective of the welfare of uh, of its its working class uh, its its um, its kind of uh, labor that 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 makes it possible uh, for the industrialist to to conduct its operations and to realize the profit so also in that trusteeship theory in continuous uh, continuum of that trusteeship uh, trusteeship theory i will give you a real life example of uh, uh, tata tatas so in india uh, you know that how much charity uh, do, uh, do uh, does the tatas do basically they are uh, uh, they heavily do this charity thing and also they 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 they, they take care of their employees in the best possible manner so they give you uh, proper holidays they give you proper salary and salary hikes and then you can get medical leave you can get maternity leave or paternity leave so oh, uh, and also they even provide you diff, uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, they even sponsor you the tours to uh, some uh, some some uh, the tourist places so that you uh, your mind can get rejuvenated uh, so that you are when when you return to work you you work with full potential you work uh, with more uh, in a more energized manner so 
not all capitalists are same but if if we see the karl marx he will say no 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 this is just to to make the uh, uh, workforce full so they uh, he will say they they are sim- simply providing them these incentives because they don't want them to 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 be uh, to be against uh, uh, against the industrialists or capitalists so that's why out of the fear they are providing but in 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 a sense they the uh, situation of conflict continues so that is a kind of distorted view because not all um, you know, people uh, uh, or industrialists or capitalists do this Uh, like i have given you the example of uh, tatas so in that way an ideology focuses upon selected parts and it gives us distorted view and uh, when we talk of political theory then it is basically uh, when we say we want to discuss the political science or political theory then uh, we must mean that we should follow absolute impartiality uh, while studying the uh, subject or while considering different ideologies so you can't be in uh, favor of a particular um, uh, ideology uh, without any reason and uh, you can't be against it without any reason so you must carefully examine all those alternatives that are being proposed and what are the plus points of it and what are the disadvantages of it so you have to get a broader view so you have uh, uh, your purpose if you are uh, if you are for example a political theorist your purpose will be to to have a comprehensive and more broader understanding of the truth so uh, that is basically the purpose of political theory now i will end the lecture with the uh, with the discussion on the unique features of political ideologies like we have understood what a political theory or what political science does political science does an impas- impassionate observation uh, uh, a kind of critical evaluation of different ideologies but then political what is what are the unique features of political ideology so political ideologies basically they try to determine uh, uh, the form of government uh, like what 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 should be the type of government and uh, who should rule and how how the rulers uh, should rule and what should be the relation between the rulers and the and the be- the people who are governed and what should be the principles that a government must follow so apart from it another unique feature feature of political ideologies is that they are action oriented so in political theory you simply observe uh, or consider or analyze different political ideologies but if you are an adherent of a political ideology you must be moved by a certain cause uh, uh, or or certain action uh, that is uh, that is that you want to realize so political ideologies are action oriented they they present a cause before uh, the adherents uh, and and for example uh, for its realization in fact uh they they uh, the the adherents of that particular ideology they make sacrifices uh, for the realization of that uh, that uh, that that set of ideas uh, for example uh, if we talk about nationalism so that is uh, this is also uh, basically an ideology so it makes you sacrifice uh for the cause of defending one's country and its freedom so you will you will say that nationalism is the best uh virtue but that is not true because just you are um a kind of um, much uh, just you are having much uh, zeal for the nation doesn't means that nationalism is the only virtue nationalism can also be uh, can go can also go to fanatic levels uh, like we saw in 20th century uh, germany or uh, italy in which we saw nazism and fascism how they flourished uh, in the name of nationalism so basically you have the cause that cause uh, may inspire you to take action to realize the uh, uh, the proposed goals so those goals may in themselves may not be that desirable it is other thing that whether that is right or wrong 
basically you are guided by a uh, cause so and also one more thing about political theory uh, political ideologies is that they uh, are either uh, in uh, in uh, they are either in favor of change or they are in favor of the status quo so for example if you think that you are being exploited you are not getting the fair share of the pie then you will certainly be uh, kind of uh, um, uh, kind of you will you will you will have rebellious attitude towards the things at play so you would be certainly pro change so any ideology which will provide you you uh, the alternative and uh, if you if you are impressed by that uh, that that ideology then you will start favoring it but then there are some people who are uh, in in uh, in favor of status quo so so they are anti change so uh, that is also basically uh, due to the reason that they are guided by some other political theory uh, sorry uh, other political ideology and uh, and that uh, why they are safeguarding the status quo because they uh, may have some vested interests in the continuation of that status quo so um, uh, for example in liberal democracy uh, it is said that capitalists have a vested interest in in the continuation of liberal democracy so uh, in that context if if you are a capitalist and uh, you may be in favor of status quo but it is not necessary it depends upon you how you think so that is basically the discussion about uh, this lecture and if you like this discussion then do ensure that you like it and also ensure that you subscribe to our channel and uh, we will be providing you the description link of our telegram channel uh, uh, in in the in the description box so you can uh, check the description box and can join our telegram channel by using that link so uh, this is all about today's discussion and it was lengthy i know and it may be uh, kind of uh, uh, not much interesting for those who don't have interest in political science but those who 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 passionately want to learn about uh, this uh, these things uh, in a theoretical sense they they must uh, have enjoyed this lecture because uh, uh, this um, this there there cannot be <laughs> we cannot present a theory in an uh, attractive way theory is basically a theory and we have to tell it just as uh, it is so thank you have a very nice day ahead